Shalom. This is the brother Atazawamia from GMS, South Carolina. I want to first and foremost give all praises to Yahweh by Shemel Shah. Double honors to the elders of Great Millstone who taught me this truth. And Shalom to all Akim out there teaching the truth in sincerity. Alright. Uh, I want to bring out this beautiful, beautiful news right here. Alright. <laughs> the Lord's visiting these the uh, the gods of these Gentiles. Alright. And uh, I'm gonna let this clip play. I'm gonna get a few scriptures on it. Alright. And then after that I'm gonna uh, close out. economic crisis has tested the faith of millions of people, but now it seems many of the churches they worship in are what need a miracle now. Hundreds have been foreclosed on in the last four years. Hundreds more, like the Clark Street AME in Boston, are in default. It may be too little and too late. There are more than 300,000 churches in the United States. In the last few years, many have seen a drop in attendance and thus a drop in donations money that drives the operations of a church. Like many American households struggling to make ends meet, hundreds of churches have fallen behind on bills with little or no ability to catch up. It's very, very difficult for people to let go. Reverend Reginald Williams heads a large church in New York. He's also part of a committee of pastors trying to save black churches from foreclosure. So once you look at the actual raw numbers, you're going to see that it's the churches that are in those conditions and their numbers are growing uh, are going to be faced with either foreclosure or just fading out or being taken over by another denomination. California has seen the worst of it. Between 2006 and 2010, 29 churches were sold by banks. In Michigan and Florida, 23 sold in each state, followed by Georgia at 19, Texas 17, Ohio 15, North Carolina 6, and five churches sold in New York. Last year, 138 churches were sold by banks that acquired the properties through foreclosure. That includes Mount Moriah Baptist that stood in the Harlem community for decades before it got into financial difficulty. In the case of Mount Moriah, the bank was unwilling to refinance the church's loan. It's the same story for other churches across the country in a similar situation. In the wake of the economic crisis and a huge bank bailout, Federal regulators are now pressuring those banks to clean up their act and get bad debt off their books. But in some cases, it's not bad luck, but rather bad management or bad decisions. Take the case of the Solid Rock Church in Memphis, Tennessee. In 2008, with their building paid for, leaders borrowed $3 million from the Evangelical Christian Credit Union to build a 2,000-seat addition. Halfway through the project, the economy collapsed. Solid Rock emptied its once hefty reserve, but it was not enough. Yeah. property was put on the auction block. Well, it's, a, it's a balancing act. When you look at the operations of the church, the economy certainly has a decline in terms of the increased uh, cost for renovations and utilities. Like many struggling companies, pastors see churches merging their congregations or working together to share building space. Solutions that may answer prayers to survive a crisis that has been a cataclysm for hundreds of houses of worship. Gary Anthony Ramsey, Press TV, New York. <laughs> oh, okay, that was the clip. I'm, I'm gonna put the link down uh, on the bottom so you can watch it. But uh, yeah, <laughs> the Lord started to jack up these churches, and there's a good reason why. Because, well, I'm gonna get the scriptures. The Lord, He don't dwell there. Okay, y'all worshiping a bunch of idols there. Okay. Let's get into the scriptures. I'm starting. Right, let's get Acts chapter 17, verse 24. It says, God that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temples made with hands, neither is worship with man's hands. All right, as though he needed anything seeing he giveth to all life and breath and all things okay so <laughs> he's not in those churches man all right for for you this message is for you so-called negroes latinos and native americans because you are the israelites according to the bible all right because you fit the curses in deuteronomy chapter uh 28 verse 
15 through 60 okay so this message is towards you okay all right that's one scripture so the lord he ain't in those in those churches this is acts chapter 7 verse 45 all right this is stephen speaking to the uh to the priest all right so he's addressing israel and this is what he says this is i started verse 45 the point is in uh verse 48 i'm gonna read down to 50 all right excuse me it says which also our fathers that came after brought in with jesus into the possession of the gentiles that's talking about joshua right there all right in that possession of the gentiles is talking about them canaanites who joshua had led the israelites into the land of canaan to conquer it to because it belonged to the israelites all right whom God drove out before the faces face of our fathers until the days of David, who found favor before God and desired to, to find a tabernacle for the God of Israel. But Solomon built him in house. Howbeit the Most High dwelleth not in temples made with hands. All right, so all them churches that shutting down in the U.S. as a as a proof that who you really call God, all right, the Most High, the Heavenly Father, whose name in the Hebrew is Yahweh, does not dwell in temples made with hands, as saith the prophets, or the prophet, okay, get this real quick, all right, see chapter 12 verse 9 says and that I am the Lord thy God from the land of Egypt will yet make thee to dwell in tabernacles in the, as in the days of Solomon fe solemn feasts I have also spoken by the prophets and I have multiplied visions and used similitudes by the ministry of the prophets so the Lord speak through his prophets okay Second Kings 21 and 10 it says and the Lord spake by his servants the prophets saying all right so that's the Lord saying that. okay so let's read that again Acts chapter 7 verse 48 it says how be it the most high dwell of not and temples made with hands all right so he's not in them churches as saith the prophets prophet and the Lord speaks through his prophet so these are the words of the heavenly father he don't dwell in no no temples made with hands and he's not worshiped by man's hands okay it says heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool what house will you build me singly house will you build me saith the lord or what is the place of my rest have not my hand made all these things all right First Kings eight twenty seven. These are the words of King Solomon, who built the temple, all right, the first temple, to the God of Israel, which his name is Yahweh. Okay, this is what he said. All right, I start at twenty six. All right, it says. And now, O God of Israel, let thy word, I pray thee, be valid, uh, uh, verified, which thou speckest unto thy servant David, my father. So you notice it's Solomon. But will the Most High indeed, or will God indeed dwell on the earth? Behold, the heaven of heavens, excuse me, the heaven and the heaven of heavens cannot contain thee. How much less this house that I have built. That's a, that's a cut so. Oh man. That's a, that's a cold cut right there, man. All right, put that Jeremiah. All right, Jeremiah 74. All right. And he 
was talking about all these churches, which another word for church could be temple, right? Because the scripture.